Huh. What a pretty sky. We've been at a few train tracks from time to time. Same tracks, actually, just further south in the news. I'm just at the very beginning of the road that leads back to my place of residence here in Anus Bay, British Columbia, Canada, west coast. Beautiful end of July day. Began the day uh, discussing an argument or at least a preparatory argument for giving us leave to at, at least have a space to enjoy the supposition that man does not need to suffer. As intimated by the reason of every scale and note of nature itself, that of the inexhaustible and in unexhausted uh, economy, biology, and psychology of our native functional correspondence with every reciprocal and corresponding dimension of heaven and earth, creatures, living systems, and so forth, none of whom experience anywhere near the distribution and even statistical likelihood of anywhere near the range of perils that we do as human beings as a whole. In uh, direct proportion to our capacity to absolve ourselves of all proportional interest, knowledge, or responsibility. <sighs> Obtaining, in exchange for our native communication with our land and our ancestors and our children, for what amount to very biased theorems and images, irrational images, that gain their whole value by their capacity to be foisted upon a worldwide demographic of people who have been farmed to be preyed upon, though for our own safety or salvation, the menacing and predatory images that have come to replace those of our own bodies, minds, souls, and universe, by or before four years of age, and I c we're tracing this, we're talking about this sociologically now, but we can also take a look at the specific cases of bigotry and psychopathy, uh, where people uh, who can demonstrate enormous kinds of intelligence can yet betray an entirely unpredictable and unprovoked deviations in ethics and even ability to comprehend anything that happens to be guilty of no more than simply being different than what they think or how they're used to thinking. On pain of escalating that bigotry, which always goes along with a highly irrational bias that preys upon the credulity of group dynamics often accusing people of the very thing that one is perpetrating in that very breath or instance. I won't go into specific cases, but this entire series of, of videos and indeed my blog, CosmicHeaven.ca, and many of my books recount numerous uh, cases of various scales. And of course, we're all susceptible to bias, but psychopathy is a particular capacity to escalate bias and bigotry. Um, upon the least provocation, and often by people who, in many other respects, exemplify an enormous range of sensitivity and intelligence, or at least appear so. Um, unable to, of course, amend this bigotry upon any prompt or any report of ill effect upon other people. Notwithstanding the fact that the irrational and predatory nature of most human discourse um, tends to undermine um, what field we have managed to exhume from the barbarity of our history, and not exclusive barbarity, I might add, um, that, of, that of rational discourse alone mediates for however reasonable our deepest beliefs and intuitions about the more important images and nature of our existence. 
A rational discussion really, though, just becomes, an irrational discussion becomes about beating over the people over the head with your own beliefs and afraid that any different belief must necessarily subject you and your children to an incomparably incompar- violent destiny of some kind. And um, notwithstanding the fact that, you know, that might be a reasonable fear in some cases, I can't say that it isn't, but the fact is, in the realm of rational discourse, because two people disagree does not mean that anyone is right or wrong. It just means that uh, if someone disagrees, they have every opportunity to make an argument using basic rules of reason and logic afforded us by life itself. Causation, essentially. If such and such is true, then it is reasonable to presume that something else is true. And sometimes this is done in an incorrect or fallacious fashion, and sometimes it's able to be sustained amidst any objection. And of course we have many examples of things that are demonstrably fallacious, and examples of things that can sustain scrutiny, and have. And not everything that sustains scrutiny is correct. And not everything that doesn't sustain scrutiny is incorrect. But again, but again, I say that the field of rational discourse, ideally, though it is often unable to, due to the vagaries of normal human psychology, the number one export of most any civilization in the last 10,000 years, can be a field to allow people to discuss things um, without relying solely upon their beliefs and intuitions, however valid they may be or may prove to be. Um, this helps us to um, nourish our capacity to um, not just rest upon the assumptions that we are often forced to resort to, but to subject them to reasonable scrutiny. And so people who scrutinize our beliefs or our arguments are doing us a huge favor. People who aren't able to support a rational objection and yet continue to foist various forms of escalated bias or bigotry, or indeed putting forth arguments that are solely based on emotional or social bias of authority or popularity, or of normal psychology and so forth, then, you know, entering into a degree of violence, not only to persons, but to a realm of discourse, that of rational discourse, that is one of the few that can offset the kinds of problems that we see when people simply rely upon their acculturated beliefs. So I'm carefully um, circumambulating, I guess you could say, uh, uh, around some of the more specific cases I might mention and have come up, say, in the last several dozen videos. Um, Because I think everyone really, the best examples that people can have of psychopathy, bias, and bigotry are... are, um, presented to any given human life on a, on a fairly regular basis, so you can rely upon your own examples. I mean, it helps to go through some of the general qualities of psychopathic behavior. It's difficult, though, because a lot of the qualities of psychopathic behavior, unless you take particular care to look at the entire context, sound like anyone who just happens to have any bias whatsoever. Um, there's a, I think there's room for argument as to what a psychopath means to do, what, if any, feelings they have, what, what, uh, what they feel responsible for, what they don't, what they actually intend, what they don't, what they need to do, and along with, in almost all cases, an, an utter incapacity upon any prompting or indication to resolve themselves to a rational and reasonable consideration of the feelings and needs of others. Instead, preying upon the credulity of others, the emotional bias of others, often claiming to protect something of considerable value, while in the same breath undermining it, and often conflating any objection to this as though it is attacking a totality of some idea or uh, space or family or nation, when in fact someone's merely objecting to very specific uh, inhospitable or violent behavior that indeed... uh, without sustaining an enormous amount of proportional interest, stands to undermine the ability for groups and nations and families to actually move forward. And it's interesting, and I've mentioned it in different videos today, that uh, of so many people who are most passionate about certain ideas about freedom and moving forward and exhuming human deception from the bowels of history, are so often contradict their own beliefs based upon constraints that have been 
acculturated and in many cases um, hardwired into their brains upon um, looking at the entire field of of data, of observation, logic, and all the points of view that everyone on Earth have to offer each of them as immensely considerable as the next. It's a vast subject, abnormal psychology, um, but I bring it up again and again because we have to contend with it so often. And it can help us to create a space to enjoy uh, a deeper, perhaps wider field of logic than, you know, uh, many of the very distinctive uh, ideas in a society, capitalism, anti-capitalism, uh, the truth about the flat earth, the round earth, you know, people right, uh, you know, supporting women's rights, supporting men's rights, people rightly suspect are uh, eminently vital to human existence and to stemming the tide of violence. Um, at the same time, in a society subjected and farmed to enjoy and even depend upon, though an opiate, so many irrational images that gain the same status of knowledge as ev and evidence, um, even though they're, they depend upon the value in actuality, upon their ability to influence and dominate the thought and spaces for thought of other people. Um, and when this happens, of course, people become very addicted to simply reaching a point where they just feel that they need to foist upon a sense of being threatened or upon a basic bias, which often, you know, calls, you know, uses the term threatened and so forth upon anyone who just happens to have a different uh, perspective. So all these different abnormal and often unconscious constraints, rationalized at any cost um, and immune to any objection upon escalated violence, bias, and bigotry, um, certainly is an enormously important part of any discussion, really. Um, it's, very, it's very common, in fact, I would say 100% of the time when I'm dealing with someone who happens to have a different opinion than mine, they will often resort to irrational bias. Um, because when human beings are disempowered so much, the images that, that are provided them uh, as compensation however irrational they may be, give one a sense of power. And when that power is threatened by anything, however rational or irrational it may be, then one resorts to simply inflicting that bias upon someone else as though under any you know, intellectual or rational pretense. Now this is going to make sense to some people and it's not to others. Um, and it's a small audience for sure. Um, but again, when people are subjected to so many irrational images like evolution and, you know, um, some aspects of creationism and uh, NASA, you know, spaceships, um, anything to do with history, pretty much, cavemen and exclusively barbaric origins, you know, bones that somehow prove, you know, ancestors were apes and so forth, all the while claiming uh, to live in a society free of all racism. Uh, you know, as, as contradictory as that is to the basic instinctive reasoning of a child, whether or not they've had the quote-unquote benefit of a, of a modern education, uh, that has proven itself, among all things, uh, exceptional at taking $100,000 or more from our children and turning their brains into the most expensive nut in the history of the world. And most malnourished nut, I should say. There are, is an enormous wealth of benefits that are accrued by birth from these lands that you see around you right now. The tree, the beauty of the sky, the intelligence of the living systems around us, um, which is, to appreciate completely, has to involve an aesthetic and synesthetic uh, response. That is a, a response to an enormous range of elements and uh, channels of knowledge and information flowing to physical and invincible, invisible, I should say, and invincible capacities that we are heir to by birth. And uh, would seek to nourish every benefit and form of the optimum cellular and social communication. Um, one of the different th things about dealing with a sociopathic society and people and groups is that they display so extremely contradictory behavior that most people, 
in a form of passive psychopathy will just be unable to hold the dichotomy within their mind and so will will simply decide that the person is wholly uh, wholly right and wholly ethical and some people of course will go and say well they're wholly bad people well the fact is that the worst aspects of society also contain enormously essential elements for our existence Eric Dubé you know has done enormously essential work um, the fact that he has demonstrated to me an enormous capacity for violent bullying uh, gang stalking type behavior um, and willing to go out of his way to demonstrate an escalated form of that in the same breath that he claims uh, to be able to ridicule any objection to this behavior uh, by stereotyping, you know, literally over a hundred comments I made at the International Flat Earth Research Society as wholly inappropriate, um, which is just, you know, irrational. And it's based upon, obviously, a deep feeling of being able to justify a very biased um, response. And indeed, I don't doubt that a psychopath could feel quite bothered on some level by any objection and probably has trouble comprehending why anyone would object to certain things. Indeed, on the main, under the current conditions, and especially if someone like Eric goes out of the way to use drugs, um, and, and potentially some spiritual practices that I have reason to believe can actually greatly increase the psychotic capacities, um, at the same time as providing a kind of flexibility and almost drug-like sedation to the human mind, often deemed spiritual, um, can be very contradictory in their behavior, very unpredictable and indeed have difficulty in comprehending a lot of different subtleties in the invisible or in the logical realm of energetics and causation in life um, that they no longer, of course, need to or are in any danger of being prompted to, to be able to do so. Um, this is part of the freedom that is often conflated with drug use by any drug user, and I've known dozens and I've grown up in a culture that is um, widespread with various forms of uh, drugs. So... Um, but my a complaint about Eifers or anything else does not mean that Eifers is a bad place. Unfortunately, I agree with Eric in the sense that objecting to it can heap condemnation on the entire uh, so-called research forum that I don't think it has anything to do, strictly speaking, with research or, or a sane society in, in many distinct cases. Uh, that's unfortunate because a lot of good things do do there and objecting to violence doesn't mean one is objecting to the entire field of research in which that violence takes place. But uh, perhaps one could forgive Eric for supposing that people would make such an equation. Though I do not. Uh, in fact, cults like the cult that Eric has essentially formed, that is one that, whatever its, whatever its merits, is able and in fact needs to enjoy, as many of its members have enjoyed, um, being absolved from all proportional uh, responsibility for rational debate or objection on the basis of however essential biases or beliefs that are objected to on pain of attacking people and then claim that they are attacking people um, and so forth and so forth. I, I'll get a little more specific for a second because I know that um, I'm talking about events that probably a lot of people probably have no idea. Um, you know, Dr. Judy Wood has done an enormous amount of really good work looking at the nature of the destruction of the two towers on September 11th, 2001 listen to hours and hours of work, I really like it. I, uh, again, in the realm of rational discussion, beliefs are important, intuitions are important, but rational objections are important. And I objected to Dr. Judy Wood's work in the specific case that uh, she went on the record with... Um, oh, I'm trying to think of his name now. Just hold on. I think his name is uh, Jim Fetzer. Yeah, Jim Fetzer. Uh, um, who asked her why she didn't call her theory of directed free energy weapons a theory. 
and she refused to call it a theory. And without going into too long a debate here, um, I noticed that the effect of tacitly conflating the evidence of destruction that she has documented so well, um, as though the indisputable nature of the evidence of destruction should be enjoyed by the theory of what might have caused that destruction, namely free energy weapons that have absolutely no ballistics, no eyewitness, and so forth. Um, that was strange, and I objected to it, and was there, and thereby treated uh, by various people, including Eric, to an enormous amount of bias and attacks and, and so forth and so forth. Um, I made uh, another argument that some, just because something is possible doesn't mean it's probable. Just because the burden of proof is imposing doesn't mean that someone is wrong. And just because someone objects to something doesn't mean someone's wrong. In the realm of rational discourse, um, it's not a place to bash people over the head with your own bias. Um, indeed, I made took pains to to reiterate that I really liked the word of do- work that Dr. Judy Wood, but it was significant and remarkable that she didn't, and that if one couldn't call her theory a theory, then I was on good grounds to call her theory part of a cult. And um, a cult indicates in this case that um, one feels really strongly that the absence of evidence shouldn't uh, detract from extolling a theory as uh, having the most amount of credibility of any other competing theory, but is alloyed with absolving its proponents of any recourse to rational debate, and certainly violence upon any objection to them, as though absolved of any responsibility for looking at the connection between their bias, however reasonable it may be on some level, with how they happen to treat others in the name of that bias. And, again, like so many things, this says a lot about the landscape of someone's mind. And I don't... uh, I'm not unsympathetic to the fact that people have a reason to feel upset and to associate with various biases. We all do from time to time. But absolving one of a sense of sympathy, a sense of uh, responsibility with diverting from rational behavior and then accusing other people of being irrational... um, uh, Eric clearly um, took great pains to listen to a lot of my objections to this behavior and uh, upon doing so uh, didn't seem to have any comprehension of these objections except to list off various synonyms for trauma that I had used throughout the course of my objection Um, and in the same breath uh, going out of his way as psychopaths generally do to demonstrate an escalated version of bigotry that stereotyped anything I'd ever shared on IFERS as wholly uh, inappropriate or um, inadmissible, one reason or another. And the claim, I guess, was that it was too wordy or something. And uh, that's one that uh, you might imagine I get a lot. But it's not a rational objection. You know, all one can really conclude from someone saying that something is too wordy is that they don't understand it. Right? Um, it's an opinion. It's not a rational objection. It could withstand some form of argument if one could take some part of it, abbreviate it, and then show that there's a way to say it in fewer words or in a clearer way, in which case that would be really amazing because that would really contribute to a, a very constructive discussion. It just so happens that in the course of uh, in my own research of enjoying an interdisciplinary approach to creative intelligence and human suffering and bliss, that uh, I'm simply trying to consider a lot of things at once quite often, not the least being my audience and the scales of trauma and violence that I've seen people are capable of and are forced to endure throughout most of their lives and how it affects how people behave. Hence this video and many like it. No, psychopathy is very common. Um, It's understandable that someone like Eric would want to use drugs, but it does almost universally uh, affect one's capacity at comprehension and at consistently nonviolent behavior, um, which Eric, you know, obviously has trouble at and has gone out of his way uh, on my behalf, it seems, to to demonstrate that fact on more than one occasion, often in the name of attempting to ridicule any rational basis for objecting to that very behavior. Uh, Indeed, we're all susceptible to bias, but um, every point of view... Object, and whether it be an objection to our image of life or not, is helpful 
in cultivating a space to mediate for, I think, our necessity to rehabilitate our capacity not just to believe things, but to enjoy a greater breadth of diversity of the native organs of perception and knowledge that we are heir to by birth. So that we don't have to rely upon authorities, we don't have to rely upon emotional bias, we don't simply have to say that we believe something, I, and and then use that as our entire argument. Indeed, I am convinced of the evidence of a flat earth, but I don't feel any great urge to provide people with all different kinds of evidence. In fact, when I do, I will often quote Eric Debay. So, um, and there's others too. Um, but I don't call that a rational argument. That's just a statement of my own mental state of being convinced. And in the course of recounting my various observations and other arguments, they may happen to be a good argument for a flat earth, but I don't often go my way to do that. Um, there are lots of other material for that. Um, as far as free energy goes, it could be helpful, could be not, but there is a parallel universe of discussion there about how human beings will generally seem to conflate their freedom with synthetic technology of whatever caliber or merit when surrounded by such an enormous evidence of an entirely free technology and indeed playing upon an assumption that I have traced into all cybernetics that man has never had or a sense of revocably lost all born coordination with nature suffice to assuage any need to suffer indeed any need for what we call technology um, just about you know covering the scope of what's possible so that we don't commit the error of recapitulating the very constraints upon our brain however laudable our aspirations that have condemned us to a world of such accelerated scales of suffering as we see today every generation hoping to offset it and to uh, reform it but often committing the very acts of violence that they attempt to deny and change and reform um, we cannot be ignorant of that so that's an all for now. I've reached my home. Good day.